On the KTAR News app, where you can tap on the microphone, leave us a message. And if you say something that is insightful, funny, or crazy, we might even play that on the air. So you heard the boys who are going to be on Outspoken this afternoon, and they are asking about what might the reason be if Joe Biden drops out of the race. Will it be COVID? Well, we've got an update on his COVID prognosis there, Joe. President Biden's physician, Dr. Kevin O'Connor, says in a new memo that cough and hoarse voice continue to be the president's primary symptoms of COVID, but they've improved meaningfully from Thursday. Dr. O'Connor says the president's temperature, pulse, respiratory rate, and blood pressure remain normal. He completed a fourth dose of Paxlovid Friday morning. Dr. O'Connor says the president continues to work. And by the way, by the way, I, I, I took that, the, 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 the Pax, the, 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 the free Lovid and... And by the way, what, do, you, do you remember? I, I took that and I feel great. <laughs> I feel great. I'm going to run. Run, you, Joe, run. You don't sound great, Joe. I'm going to run. Run, Joe, run. There are questions about whether or not Joe is going to stay in the race. I talked with a friend and I said, okay, you put odds on it now. There's mm-hmm. been some updates this morning, and that is basically since the – um, since the DNC is kind of shifting the rules to try to force this early uh, virtual vote to get him in, in as the nominee and avoid any sort of a, a contested convention. Uh, I said, what do you think now? And he goes, based on this information this morning, 90% chance Joe Biden is the nominee. 90% he thought. Hmm. You don't I, agree? No, I do not. Um is there any way that it looks good for the Democrats if he stays in? Because, uh, listen, there's a lot of enthusiasm right now about the idea of, uh, 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 let's call it a makeover, uh, yeah. a new coat of paint under new management. I think far more likely he gets out because he's kind of changed his tune over the last few weeks here. Insiders also say that he's listening way more and asking if Vice President Harris, uh, how would she do against Trump? Hmm. Why are you listening to what others are saying if if you plan to stay in, don't you just say, nope, I'm staying in. Nothing to see here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's wrong to listen, but I, I hear what you're saying. Well, but he wasn't before. Like you're seeing this as a tea leaf, right? He's reading this a little differently. Yeah, that okay. now he's sitting there and saying, hmm, well, you know, maybe I should see how this would go. And By the way, by the way, I was standing there and saying it too. By the way, maybe you remember. I don't. Maybe you remember that. Standing. I'm so glad the voice singing. made a day two appearance here. Yeah. It was. <laughs> By the way, mm-hmm. yeah. go ahead. No, that's that's all I've got to say. Well, my question remains: yeah. is there any is there any reason that, that it could this, be good for the yeah, Dems for him to stay works in? Out for them, uh, a couple things. Um, y- yes, finger goes up from Chris Merrill in the front. So my question is: you put the odds at twenty. 20- 20% he stays in, 80% he stays out. Mm-hmm. What is the 20%, I guess? Let me let me phrase it that way. Mm-hmm. What is the 20% that says maybe it's an okay idea? Oh, uh, I'll start with this. We said yesterday that replacing somebody isn't easy. So you've got to go and redo all of this stuff out there. TV ads, radio ads, social media ads, not just your own for Biden-Harris, but also all of the other candidates out there. And- I mean, obviously, they don't care about the GOP side, but they do care about those down ballot folks who who they want to see win and, and keep things on the blue side of things. All yes. of those would have to be redone. That's kind of a logistics thing then, right? Yes. OK, I, I think you've got that um, name recognition. Biden's the biggest name out there for the Democrats. He's been in office the last four years. He served as VP for eight. His name carries a lot of pull. What other Democrat out there has that sort of experience and know how? I think that's a big factor. And name recognition and everything else mm-hmm. that goes into it, yeah. Um, if he stays in, we know he's the candidate. If he drops out, all these delegates then get to pick a new person. And I think there has to be some fears that that could fracture the party. It could lead to deeper rifts that can't be healed. So it's presumable to me, and I said yesterday, it would have to be Harris. But if it does go to the convention, you could have people saying Mark Kelly, Shapiro, Wes Moore, Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer. You're mm-hmm. going to get all these names thrown out there all of a sudden if Joe goes away. And you could have six camps develop instead of a Biden stays in, Biden goes out camp. Yeah, there really is no clear replacement at this point. There's no Harris, but that's not set in stone. Right. OK. So there could be a lot more division yeah. right now. Two camps. Imagine okay. if Joe goes. 
then who knows what name we're going to hear out there. You could hear the Michelle Obamas, the Oprahs, all of that could start up. Yeah. So just a lot of division could start up. And, and also, I thought about this. Be careful what you wish for. Does this open up to other questions for the party? If Biden steps down, does it cause the public and other members of Congress to question the mental acuity of other older members of Congress? Are they doing that anyway? A little. I mean, but Mitch McConnell. How loud do you want it to get? In, uh, who in would it hurt more, I guess, is the question the Democrats would have. Like Nancy Pelosi, old. Mm -hmm. Chuck Schumer, old. Raul Grijalva, older, just yeah. bought cancer. And one, Joe. Why do I have to keep reminding you of this? Uh, one. I understand. But anybody who's, hey, Joe is 81. Yeah. So does it open up that door more of, hey, your guy, the president, stepped down. You should, too. That's a good question. I was thinking uh, of a few other. I, I love your reason, your reasonings. I, I had some of those uh, myself. And the be careful what you wish for, I hadn't considered. Uh, the primary results said Biden won. I think that's a big reason that the Democrats have to be very careful because all of a sudden they could alienate anybody that voted for him. And we may see dissension among the ranks that went, wait a minute, you're pulling the rug out from under us, which could also turn into the lawsuits from the RNC saying, hold on, bait and switch. You had a chance to run, too. Gretchen Whitmer, Whitmer you didn't throw your name in the race. Yeah. So if you wanted to, you could have and you didn't. Yeah, absolutely. Second place was not Joe Biden. First yeah. place was Joe Biden. Yeah, Dean Phillips finished behind somebody else. Yeah. Right. It was Joe Biden, somebody else, or Dean Phillips. <laughs> Sorry, Dean Phillips. Uh, yeah, so there really is no universal support for him to drop out. I, I think the Democrats right now are so fractured. I also worry about this strategically for the Democrats. Do they want to burn a candidate who might have hopes in 2028 with some sort of a haphazard three- or four-month campaign here? Suppose it. I, I, I think Gavin Newsom wants to run in 28. I think he's been positioning himself for that. He wants to wrap up his his term as governor in California 26, uh, and then which would be January 27, and then immediately start campaigning for president 28. That's the, what I think is going to happen. I could be wrong. The Dems have positioned him as kind of the anointed one. I I agree. And so if that's the case, are you going to burn his chances? Because all of a sudden it would look like a weakened candidate. Whitmer, Shapiro, all of a sudden these guys look like just you know plug and play plug and play losers. Listen, we've seen boxing matches where, you know, the, the main event doesn't show, and instead they put in some unknown from Philadelphia named Rocky. Uh, very rarely do they end up winning, unless you're Rocky. Uh, otherwise, otherwise, you're just a sacrificial lamb. What about this, too? What if they do run another candidate now, and that candidate somehow wins then, and then you're Gavin Newsom in 2028? Well, everything gets thrown into disarray for him, but I think they take the win. Oh, they take the win, but yeah. if you're Newsom, you go like, hey. I got hosed. I want to run now. Yeah, they're going to say you're young enough, Gavin. You can no. you can do it later. Mm -hmm. uh, if they don't go with somebody different, and Harris is on the top of the ticket, that puts us into that whole who's going to be her running mate. And we've had this conversation before, too. I was getting into a debate with, uh, with a friend yesterday about who that should be. We kicked off we kicked out some names yesterday mark cuban mark kelly uh, you know who else should be on that ticket and they said well listen you have to take somebody from wisconsin michigan or pennsylvania if you want to win those states those are supposedly the three biggest that the dems need to lock the up dems call it the blue wall then you've got you know arizona nevada also thrown in there but in the same conversation this person told me that whoever is the vice presidential candidate won't have that much influence so I don't think that putting Harris on top of the ticket and then somebody from Pennsylvania or Michigan all of a sudden shores things up. I just don't think they have as much influence as people want to think. No, I agree. I don't think Gretchen Whitmer locks down Michigan for a Kamala Harris. No, I agree. I agree. Or Shapiro, Pennsylvania for Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the whole debate between ideology and... And showmanship. Do you want to take somebody who's got that name recognition, brings that enthusiasm, looks like an instant plug and play leader, or do you want somebody that is going to follow right on down the middle of whatever the DNC philosophy is this time around, whatever their, you know, their their code is this time? Don't you need a little bit of both? Uh, listen, at this point, you're too late. If you're going to run a replacement, you better come up with a showman who's a little bit in your camp. But you got to have the showman first that's going to be able to to Especially electrify. Especially if you're people. running against Trump. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Chris and Joe Show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe.
and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.